Yo, what's up, YouTube fam? It's your boy, Koozie. I'm back at you with another hot TikTok reaction video. Y'all don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. These videos are for entertainment purposes only. Don't believe anything that you hear or see in these videos. Don't believe anything that I say in these videos. Always use your own discernment. Always do your own research. Let's go. We all know that 2025 is going to be an interesting year, right? So you know how everybody talks about these reptilians and how they've been living amongst us. Yes, reptilians been around for, what, thousands of years. Some of y'all even have DNA in y'all, reptilian DNA in y'all, and y'all don't even know it. Now, my question is, are you reptilians that are going to reveal yourself in 2025? If it's something that is needed to be done, can the human brain comprehend something outside of itself due to the fact that humans run on straight ego, thinking that they're the only thing in this universe and that God finds them to be just the only special creatures that ever existed. Now, for me, as a person who is enlightened and knows certain things, like I just want to know to everybody, not just the reptilians, but to everybody, do y'all think that 2025 is going to be an interesting year? And what do y'all expect to be revealed? The reptilian hybrids have been known to shapeshift temporarily into into their reptilian form. Uh -huh. So that's happened with three of them. Whom be exporting chicken to the Chinese? Can we buy a Chinese firm? No, not right now. Then why should they buy one of ours? Why not? Because we Serve can't the, buy it, one of theirs. It's it's open up the market. Very, very well. quo, yes, we have we have capitalism and we embrace it. And they, they, do they don't, Clarice. Yes, we have. Man, y'all got to remember, question everything. This is going to be a good video. If I was you, I would not skip ahead. No, you're going to miss some stuff that you definitely going to want to see and that you definitely don't want to miss. Let's get it. We're different from the president. We're very discreet, reptilian, cold-blooded. These are the races we have. No, I'm not a poor baby. I'm more reptilian, cold-blooded, <laughs> and go in to win the election. Uh, baby, I'm more reptilian, cold-blooded. <laughs> I'm more reptilian, cold-blooded. Hey, let me know what you think about that down below. Do you think she just, you know, using that as a just you know crazy wording or do, like you know or do you think she's trying to hint at something me personally mm, i don't know i don't know but i know those clips are going viral right about now injustice and again the food security issue he's been spelling that out the whole time i want you to know that we in the congress you fully think? support and take what's going on with her neck Hey, look, since we're seeing so many videos right now with the uh, the Nancy Pelosi thing, you know, that's kind of going viral everywhere. Everybody's talking about it. It's not just me. It's not just a few other people. It's a lot of people are covering that. But not many people realize that this is being talked about by celebrities, by people in politics. And it could just be this crazy conspiracy, a joke. It could be. I'm not saying any of this is real before you you know, say that I'm crazy or whatever. I'm just telling you that the possibilities are endless when it comes to this reptilian thing. Does anybody remember back in 2018 on the Howard Stern Show, Howard Stern was interviewing Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins, and he made it very plain that he said he had seen something. Did you realize that? About the alien, not a shapeshifter, did you? You dropped a bombshell. Every paper picked it up. Let's just say I was with somebody once and, and I saw I saw a transformation that I can't explain. The, the person transformed into something other than you. Yes. So, you know, a lot of people are saying this, many people are saying this. Remember Britney Spears even said she went out with a big deal. He was a lizard guy and it terrified her that she played into Is everybody just joking about it? Just using that, just throwing that reptilian word around? I don't know. Let's just say I was with somebody once and, and I saw I saw a transformation that I can't explain. Mm. The person transformed into something other than human. Yes, I saw it. Were you on drugs? I was not. I was totally sober. Wow. You were talking with, I'm just going to, I'm guessing you some questions. <laughs> if you were, ta you were talking to someone. 
Yes. And you're having a conversation yes. like we are now. Yeah. This close. <laughs> and the person suddenly, not in a hallucination, they said to you, look, something's going to happen here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show, I'm going to morph into something else. Mm-hmm. And you're like, this is ridiculous. That's not how it happened. T- give me, give me, give me, give me a please. I no, want to see this. Imagine you're doing something and suddenly you turn around and there's somebody else standing there. A different human. Sort of. It's hard to explain without going to detail. I'd rather you, not go into details. Okay. But did you say to the person, what'd you just do here? That's yes. You. And they acknowledged it. And, oh. and what did they say they were? From another planet? And they wouldn't explain. Why not? Again, without telling the story, it's a really messed up story. A famous person? No. They, they transformed into someone else or something I mean, Billy, else. I've had that happen. I'm being vague on purpose. I was up there with one of the most intense things I've ever been through. Now, that's freaky. Now, it was alleged that it was some female that he was having sexual acts with. But, uh, yeah, I might have to look into that yourself, man, a little bit. Because that one is kind of, yeah, kind of creepy, man. Because he kind of looked like one himself, to be honest. Let me know what you think about that down below in the comment section. Is that creepy or not? Do you believe him? And how many of y'all heard of the Billy Corgan story before now? Let me know in the comment section. You're no, like, it doesn't because American farm income is going to go up. It's going to be the it's going to be a great thing for they the might economy. Sell, they they might use it as deal. an entry to, to exporting chicken to us, which would be you know. No, we, we will be exporting chicken to the Chinese. Can we, we buy export. a Chinese firm? No, not right now. Then why should they buy one of ours? Why not? Because we can't the, buy it, one of theirs. It's Open up the market. Very, very, very well. Quo, yes, we have we have capitalism and we embrace it. And they, and they don't, yes, Clarice. We have yes, Clarice. We have. Market, very, very, very well. Yes, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have. That's crazy. We can't buy one of theirs. Open up the market. Very, very well. I don't know how that one got in there again, y'all. What is going on in the world? Bitch, I'm fucking reptilian. Bitch, I'm fucking reptilian. Bitch, I'm fucking reptilian. How do you believe? Because I'm an alien. Because I'm an alien. I can't Do you? Are they trying to tell us something? Or is it just a coincidence? In my opinion, it's no- nothing ever is a coincidence, man. I believe they trying to tell us something. Personally, that is crazy, man. This is a whoo, crazy world. I've seen uh, areas where I was put into a, like a, a clean room. If you know what a clean room is, uh, as a drain in the middle of the floor where they, you can dissect somebody and you just hose everything down when you're done. It's called a clean room. And I knew that there was some uh, reptilian doctors that was on the other side of the door, but there was a platform evidently above, above the window I was working at, and there was uh, humans up there. And there was, I don't know why, they was pushing them off. It seemed like low gravity. And, uh, and as they was falling, these things was coming out of the wall that looked like an electrical conduit, and uh, it would jab them each side of the leg and the inner side and suck all the fluid out of them. And uh, they would look like mummies as they was coming down, but they was coming down all the way to the floor and they had the uh, shorter reptilian guys down there and they was throwing the bodies into these burners and they had this thing on the ceiling that was like half moon shaped silver and it would go over to a pile of bodies and pick them up, vacuum them up or whatever it was doing. I don't know how it was, probably vacuuming them up and it would carry it over a batch of bodies over closer to a burner and they had these uh the short reptilian guys just throwing the bodies and they're burning it up it's uh that was kind of disturbing the, ooh, the unalive flows a clean room do you think he's making it up do you think he's making that up man to me the body language and stuff tell me he might be telling the truth 
Okay, so I'm just now getting around to this, guys. I've watched this over and over, and it is absolutely phenomenal. Lou Elizondo is the one that put me in the road on, on the path. I started watching him a long time ago. Other people have different feelings about him. I've always loved Lou Elizondo. He has come out just like Grush with Ross Colt Hart and News Nation and said that we have recovered. The U.S. government has recovered non-human specimens. It says right here, former Pentagon insider Louis Elizondo says the Department of Defense has a spacecraft crash retrieval program. Same thing, David Grush said, guys. It says, and has recovered non-human specimens, NHI, same thing. In a News Nation special, Elizondo reveals more than any Pentagon official has done before, naming the government agencies and aerospace companies he says possesses these alleged spacecraft. And this is not the only thing he's talking about. Guys, in this interview, he went as far as talking about Brazil and these people in Brazil and this military and all of these sightings and how they were injuring people. Not necessarily that we had enough evidence to show that they were benevolent or malevolent, but that they people have been injured and unalived at times. This you see in this is where people have been abducted. This is some type of parasitic thing that is put and embedded in people's skin. It said that it was some type of, you know, had metal in it, but it had a biological covering over it. So like a cocoon, a biological cocoon with some type of metal in it had been retrieved out of people's skin. That is crazy. Lou Elizondo talked about how people that have encountered UFOs, me included, and some of you guys, that parts of our brain, I can never pronounce that part of the brain so some of you know that you can correct me on what it is but that it gets larger and that sometimes people have encountered it it gets larger and it, it, we develop what they call the hitchhiker effect and this is where you are just randomly at places and these orbs just show up in your house and other places they go through walls his wife even gave these testimonies lou has been doing this for so long and I respect him so much for coming forward, doing the same thing as David Grush. In this interview, if you've not seen it, you need to go pull it up on YouTube, watch it, The Confessions of a UFO Hunter. It is absolutely amazing. There are things, he confirms Area 51, confirms Roswell. Guys, this is some great information. Pull it up, watch it, it is well worth it. Leave your comments. One of the most witnessed shapeshifter uh, in present day is Queen Elizabeth. And there are, like what I've read as far as like um, blogs and articles and, and, and different things from England is uh, there are thousands of calls every single year for every appearance that she makes of like, oh my God, like, I don't, am I losing my mind? Do I need to go visit a hospital? But like, I swear I just saw Queen Elizabeth as like a 10 foot tall uh, lizard. You know what I mean? Like these are just people who are just out there waving the flag, watching Queenie, just walking by. And they literally see her in her true form, um, which I think is really fascinating. Hey man, everybody ain't lying. Some of them calls ain't BS, bleed it. Like I say, ain't nothing ever a coincidence. All I know, man, y'all be like, we want the truth. And I feel like you can't handle the truth. No, I'm just playing. I know some of y'all can handle it out there, but it's a lot of people ain't gonna be able to handle this, man. They can be calling you crazy and all that, and calling me crazy too in the comment section. But uh, remember what I said from the jump, though. Use your own discernment, do your own research. Okay, guys, here we go again. I keep catching these. People keep sending me these, look, is this a reptilian? I'm asking you straight up, look, we keep catching these news reporters, these politicians, and all these different people. Look, we're not saying this is for real. We're not saying this is 100% legit. I'm just saying, is it possible that some of these videos are actually real? Because we're seeing it over and over. I mean, it's not like you can ignore something like this. And I know people say, well, that guitar Miles, he's crazy. All he does is talk about reptilians and dracos and all these crazy aliens. Look, guys, hey, look, I'm just telling you right now that there's a reason that these videos are being put out. I'm not saying it's real. This is for entertainment purpose because God forbid anybody know that there might be something other than this regular world we see. And I know every time I do these videos, they take them down. So this one will probably get taken down as well. But you know what? I don't care because it's entertainment and it's fun. And we should be able to have fun doing this. Look, if this is real, that's all good. If it's fake, it's all good. But hey, you leave your comments. You let me know. Hey, is there a possibility that it could be real?
from the private company and pay them a ton. A lot of people gonna call Cap, they gonna say that was just a glitch with the TV, but in my HO, hmm, that was a mess money for it i mean it's just absolutely you know it's just avarice and greed you know got it so that, that, so that makes sense so they want like a broader public knowledge or surface area on the topic but they don't want any of their ip taken out that's of the right. company that's right uh, yeah i mean that that yeah, makes they, sense. they want to make as much money as possible on it and and here here we have a, a an event taking place of the the world getting ready to be made aware of the fact uh that there's this hum, humongous uh, other civilization uh, around us in the in our galaxy. What's the evidence that it's extraterrestrial and not some the time fact, traveler the, the, or the, like? The, yeah. the, the fact the, the fact that uh, people have been face to face with them uh, and had telepathic communication. Sure, with but them. sure, but for everyone that says they're from Zeta Reticuli, they also say they're from the future and they're also super deceptive no. and say no. all sorts of other crazy no. stuff. No, th those are people in the UFO community who say all that. They kind of make up stuff. You know, the, but the but the fact of the matter is, is is just as plain as day. No, but I mean, if you look at the Edgar Mitchell database, any of the databases around this stuff, I actually think yeah. it's split. Like, I don't think it's clear that they're from another planet. In fact, if we there's one hominid uh, species on Earth that's sentient, upright, bipedal, that has advanced technology, and it's us. And there are 20 billion Earth-like planets in the Milky Way galaxy, but there are over a trillion non-Earth-like planets. So, and we're seeing a thing that looks like us. Yeah. They're hominid. So yeah. the likelihood of evolutionary convergence on a totally foreign planet is just super, super slim. And so the Occam's razor explanation would actually be that there's something emanating from, they're, they're sort of related to mankind. And they could be interstellar, they could be a different timeline interacting with us. I just think we have to uh, widen the aperture of possibilities. Oh yeah, no, no. The, the, I mean, there, but not to the point of just obfuscating yeah. the obvious. Sure. You know. The, yeah, there's a thing. There's yeah. a phenomena. Yeah. But I do think that's called the phenomena for a reason because it's sort of really hard to classify. Well, it's, it's because the the conversation that you're talking about now mm -hmm. uh, has has assiduously excluded all the evidence of face-to-face -face contact that people have had. Mm. I mean, there are, are thousands of people who've had face-to-face -face contact in, telecom in telepathic communications with the actual occupants of the craft, which there's this huge effort to kind of pretend that isn't true, like that isn't true, because there aren't enough government-circled people in scientific community people who've affirmed it yet. Well, that's uh, a good segue into well, the first UFO-related person you represented is John Mack. That's and, right. And John Mack was the head of the Harvard Psychiatry Department. And I think he, uh, through his friend Bud Hopkins, his childhood friend, right, started to see all these cases, these, these people who no mental health history. Right. Uh, it wasn't even always through hypnotic regression. Right. They would just say, I, I had these experiences where I was abducted by you know these aliens and he started to take it very seriously and so yeah what 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 do you think about John Mack and his investigations well I, I represented him for t uh, 10 years uh, and uh, met dozens of people uh, that he had worked with uh, was involved in vetting them to determine which ones were credible and which ones weren't uh, what detailed information they had uh, and uh, have talked to you know, several absolutely totally credible witnesses that I could put in front of any American jury uh, and the jury would be absolutely clear that they were telling them the truth uh, who have had direct face-to-face -face contact with uh, one or more of these extraterrestrial beings you know they have them in American underground military bases they have the beings they have the beings what so they've interviewed the beings I've talked to people who were there when they were interviewing where the beings. where where are the beings that, that particular one was at S4. In uh, Area 51. In, uh, outside of Area 51, about 11 miles so away. I would totally distrust that, but I have some good friends who are mm -hmm. very trustworthy. So they're a couple, and the husband broke the world record for the biggest wave ever surfed in Nazare, Portugal. His name's Garrett McNamara, and her, her name's Nicole, and they're very good people, and they would, just would never lie. Yeah. And they have a friend who worked at Area 51, or it might be a friend of a friend, but they met him. And he was totally traumatized and after having worked there. Yes. And he said that he went, was led down into a basement. That's right. And he saw 
reptilian creatures and they were they were speaking yeah. English. Well, they were yeah. they're, they're telepathic. They're telepathic. And they but, talk yeah. French to French people. They talk German to German people. Right. But they're they're telepathic. But isn't that weird? That's strange, though, right? Uh, strange, yes. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt about so, that. So, but then, like, if they're that advanced, they're telepathic, they can fly, you know, faster than light, then yeah. how the hell do we corral them into underground bases against their will? Or is it, are they happy to be kept? Well, the... the... Don't fall for the boo-boo, man. Any time they disrespect and they try to discredit the man above, the Holy One, you should already know what's going on. It don't, it's, it don't take rocket, it's not rocket science, right? Let's go, man. One of the ones that I was, I was talking to the guy who was there when they were interviewing one of them, it was clear that it was voluntary that the the extraterrestrial being was voluntarily talking with them was share was having telepathic communications so they was being interviewed they're just kind of hanging out in these spaces well that uh, i wouldn't put it that way what, <laughs> what, 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 what do they want what, why, why what, are they what, there what what happened what happened is uh is uh is albert stein was this guy's name uh he called me on his deathbed uh he was dying up in in, in northern minnesota called me uh, and wanted me to come and see him right away because he was dying. And so I flew there and went and met, met him at the hospice. And he's sitting there with all the tubes in him and dying. And he said, look, he had to tell somebody about this, that he was, uh, he was the United States Army, uh, was assigned as a clerk typist to Project Blue Book. Uh, and that, well, Blue Book had this whole buffaloing operation going on, you know, telling people that it was swamp gas and, you know, birds that they had misidentified, that there were over 700 actual sightings that they found it absolutely impossible to discount, that they couldn't come up with, because too many people had seen him, you know, there were too many corroborating witnesses, there was radar tracking and everything. Uh, and he was assigned to the group that was investigating those sightings. And, uh, and he would just sit and they'd send people out to interview all the people that had seen one of these things. And then they'd come back and give them, give him their reports and he would type them all up. And he was there for years uh, and got to be close friends with the guy who was the commander of that unit. Uh, and the guy came into him after a number of years, they, they shared certain kind of religious views, uh, he with the commander. Uh, and uh, the commander came in and told him that he was going to be going to Area 51 and wanted him to come with him uh, as the clerk typist, just to kind of monitor what they were doing. So they went to Area 51, they got taken to S4, uh, went down a, a number of flights uh, down to S4, and they came to this area where there was this uh, a, a big room with a two-way mirror in it, and there was an extraterrestrial being there. Uh, he, he was like, you know, five and a half feet, almost six feet tall, had a kind of a, a light a blue jumpsuit on that they'd given him, and he was standing there. Uh, and this guy, Albert, wouldn't go near him. Uh, he was just traumatized by the, by the guy. And he said he, he thought he was demonic uh, and didn't want to go near him. Uh, but his commander went in and was having this telepathic communication going on with him uh, and so he stayed outside and the, the people that were there staffing the area they showed him they they had these uh, card files uh, where they had been interviewing uh, the being voluntarily uh, and he was answering questions that they had and one of the questions was you know where do you come from uh, and he said that he was part of a a group of beings they were from different star systems in our galaxy uh, and that they were part of a, a, a team that were going around inside the galaxy look, checking on places where life had actually begun on different planets and they were sort of monitoring where, what they were doing uh, and they, they asked the follow-up question they said well what who's in charge of that who what kind of they didn't say it this way, but what kind of juridical entity, you know, is there that's coordinating this kind of a thing? And he said, well, uh, uh, you you people would refer to it as God, but it's very different from what you think. 
is what he said. <laughs> and so they, specific, they specifically said that they were from different star systems and different planets inside our galaxy. Uh, and there he did was. He, did he go more into the God thing? How it's different than he did? That's all. That's what he told me, and that he wanted to he wanted to share that with me. And he said that uh, he didn't believe him. Uh, he didn't believe it because he thought he was demonic, uh, and therefore he wasn't ever going. To, he never told anybody about this in his life, and he was dying, so he wanted to tell me that this had happened. This is this guy was on his deathbed. Yeah, really. What's his name? His name is uh, Albert Stein. Albert Stein. He was a he was a, cl a, a clerk? clerk typist, U.S. Army clerk typist for Blue Book, assigned to Blue Book, to this special division of Blue Book. Are you hearing this? Do you really believe what this guy is talking about? That's man. Like I say, question everything. Do you, you hear what he's talking about? Me personally, I ain't buying it. Not buying it. So the prison planet theory claims that the tunnel of light, which appears is actually just a trap. It's designed to wipe the whole memory of the latest incarnation and to recycle the individual's soul into another body. So this tunnel of light, basically, it's functioning to keep an individual's soul kind of in an infinite loop on Earth, if that makes sense. And that's like a core foundation of, of this theory. It's like the whole thing of like, oh, when you enter the white light, it's like you're being reborn again as like a brand new baby. And that's the loop. That's the infinite loop that we're talking about here. There's also a memory wipe that occurs with it. And this causes everyone to have amnesia of their past experiences. There are, there is a small group of individuals that do recall their past lives. And this is kind of also used as evidence for the prison planet theory. And we'll talk about that later. Like, you know, like the past life regression kind of stuff. Yeah. Like people recalling. We did a whole episode on that. We'll talk more about it. But so the idea is most people aren't aware of this because of the memory wipe. It just feels like a new life. But there are certain individuals who, for whatever reason, their memory wasn't completely wiped and they do recall a past life. And that's used as evidence for the prison planet theory. The prison planet theory also claims that reincarnation is a real phenomenon. And that's that's like a core belief. This theory doesn't work if that's not true. I want to talk next about the astral realm, the reptilians and their devious agenda we do a sound for that as well yeah what do the reptiles sound like <laughs> <laughs> we need more patreon so we can get a soundboard <laughs> yeah we <laughs> send us one <laughs> we don't have them in canada <laughs> so the prison planet theory sites that you know, all that i'm thinking about is like reptiles like i don't know like you, I'm not even going there. Let's fuck it. Let's move on. Let's push forward. Let's push forward. Let's be professional. We're professionals here on this word podcast. So it cites that reptilians are referenced in multiple ancient cultures across the globe. The reference is cited. There's a bunch of these main sources, and they they kind of all suggest maybe the existence of reptile beings, like in ancient times or some shit. So Jainism and Hindu, they have the Naga, whom they describe as half human, half serpent deities. That's N-A-G-A, -A. Aztecs worship the, the Quetzalcoatl, whom they described as the serpent-like god. The Hopi Indians in North America, they have the Shetty, translates to Snake Brothers. And then African shamans, there's claims of the Chitari, whom they say control the earth. And then Chinese, Korean, and Japanese legends... They reference a race of reptilians called the Kappa, which is interesting because in Mario, those turtles are called Kappas, mm. and they are also reptiles. That's the connection. Connecting the dots. <laughs> the the Gnostics, which we've referenced a few times already, they do reference parasitic entities called Archons, I believe is how they pronounce it, who use humans as an energetic food source, but they also prevent our souls from leaving the material realm upon the death of our physical bodies. These are kind of these ancient references are kind of used as a foundation for the claim that reptile beings exist. That's ties into this prison planet theory. Now, if we're going to talk about the reptilians, there's a few claims that are made about these reptiles. Not only do they move their tongues at rapid rates, as demonstrated by Izzo, <laughs> but they are both physical and astral beings. 
They have been manipulating man for thousands of years, and they're responsible for setting up this soul trap using advanced technology. It's alleged that they operate an energy grid around Earth that sends tunnels of light to recently deceased people to lure their souls. The trap souls that get lured into the light, right? Because you're like, oh, I'm going to go into the light because, like, fuck it, I'm going to heaven or whatever the fuck. What actually happens is your memory gets erased and then you're sent to another body on Earth. The other component of this is that the reptiles, uh, the alleged reptiles, they feed on negative lower vibrational energy. So emotions like fear, pain, grief, rage, anxiety, and lust. That's the idea. These reptiles are eating your low vibrational energy and they erase your memory because they trick you with white light tunnels. Energy vampires. Yeah. Let's talk about the astral plane. The prison planet theory claims that higher dimensional that higher dimensions outside of our three-dimensional reality exist, such as the astral plane. We've talked about the astral plane before. I actually think we did a Patreon episode on that. We did a lot of Patreon episodes on shit that we're mentioning today. Yeah. The astral plane, this is where the parasitic repti- reptilians are claimed to exist. So it's this it's not the physical plane, it's the astral plane, which it gets you know it's confusing a little bit because the, it wasn't the like the energy grid is around the earth and isn't that like three-dimensional you know what i don't know maybe i i don't know we'll save it for final thoughts but when physical bodies die or when an individual has an out-of-body experience the prison planet theory claims that the individual soul enters the astral plane now this is where the trick occurs in the astral plane, the parasitic reptilians take on the form of God, dead relatives, or, you know, like if you're Christian, Jesus, if you're a uh, Muslim, Muhammad, etc. Like whatever, whatever it is, they'll take on that form. And it kind of makes the soul feel good and like peaceful and like, oh, I should interact with this entity. But it basically is just used to trick souls into entering the tunnel of light, which is the I ain't gonna lie, at this point, it seems to be simple, mad. Do not go into the false light. Soul Trap in Prison Planet is ran by physical and inter- interdimensional beings. Sounds to me like we have dem- demonic forces or demons. I mean, that's what I'm getting out of it. Let me know what you think, though. I don't, I don't know. I might be tripping. Let me know what you think. It's reptilian technology. So it's a manipulation tactic to gain trust. This is fun. This, so this is from the Reddit post that we were mentioning earlier. This is the OP quotes the Holy Bible to support his claim here. And he says the following, quote, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. That's 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. End quote. There's some references to like tunnels of light maybe being a trick, and that's also used as evidence that the white tunnel of light and the reptilian present planet theory is a thing. Say no to white light. Don't go towards the tunnel. Yeah, towards say no light. say no to white light. Why can't we have red light, blue light, green light, black light? Black light matters. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like that doesn't exist, but it does. Black lights are a thing. I forgot for like a second. Yeah, like you gotta be careful with those though. Like something, you know, like put a black light. That was my worst fear going out <laughs> clubbing, wearing a shirt that I already wore once. Or did that guy just jack off? <laughs> yeah. Why is he covered? <laughs> What's that on your shirt? Uh, What's that all over jizz? your face? <laughs> Damn. That is a. Uh, that's interesting to note that they like manipulate posing as god or something so it's really they struck a deal with the churches and religion and big hollywood we've been taught to always go towards the light <laughs> they struck a deal with big hollywood yeah i like that harvey weinstein's in this yeah i like that. tricking people <laughs> <laughs> fucking big hollywood big hollywood <laughs> jesus <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the afterlife tricks and the scams that are occurring. Let's go more depth into this. If an individual does not enter the tunnel of light, the entities will try convince and kind of try persuade the individual. Again, 
trying different forms. They might be an angel. They might be Jesus, God, a saint, maybe some kind of a guide, maybe an ascended master if you're more secular or some kind of like guardian angel. Like whatever the fuck they need to do, they'll do. They'll just become whatever, you know, whatever they need to kind of thing. If the individuals still refuse to enter the tunnel of light, the entities will try even further to persuade and convince them. They will be like, oh, you got to go back to Earth to like pay a karmic debt or like you didn't learn enough. Like go back and learn some shit, you dumb fuck. (laughs) They'll send you (laughs) back to Earth or they'll be like, oh, you know what? You're actually really special. You're very smart. You're a special boy. We got a special mission for the special boy and they'll send you back to Earth to fulfill your special mission. All of this apparently is bullshit. It's just elaborate, an elaborate ruse to get you to enter their tunnel of white light. It's claimed that the prominence of religious indoctrination and big Hollywood, as we've brought up on the Swerve podcast, you heard it here first, big Hollywood, this permeates the culture. So it makes it really easy for these reptilian entities to convince and trap your soul because it's very believable, right? Crazy, crazy, crazy. Like I say, in my humble opinion, my HO, I believe those are demons. Think about what um, the alleged giants that are working with the army or alleged working at, with the alleged army at the Dosey base underground. Say so you can't even stomp your toe. You better not even stomp your toe and mention God's name. They get mad. You can't mention God or Jesus or nothing like that around them. I mean, like, it's it's not rocket science. It's just common sense, man. But a lot of people going to be out here trying to, you know, misinform you and try to, you know, just, you know, discredit what's really going on. But uh, I get it, man. I get it. But, man, what I say, man, the truth is the truth, huh? <laughs> Y'all want the truth. Well, let it be known. So I seen that picture on the Internet. The Baby's album dropping at midnight. Baby on Baby 2. I'm guessing this the album cover. I hope not, but it might be. But this him looking like this, but why? Something like a reptilian shape shifting with a whole character, with a whole identity. Got his own flow, got his own characteristic, copying off us. Y'all think this fake? This is what he looked like behind the scenes. It is so easy to fool y'all because you've been programmed for a long time. The only way you're going to believe it when you see it for real. Y'all going to be like, man, he J.A. Start talking about the baby. Start talking about that. Somebody do something like this, man. And post as an album cover. With no words or nothing. You sitting there looking like that. In a creepy place, a creepy place like that. What you gonna think? You like, man, we're on in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. I I nah. I won't. In front of our face, a lot of redundancies here. Well, this is a clone lab. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kate. Just a little clone humor. And here's my little clone tumor. Kill me. Christ, wow. What does this department do again, exactly? <laughs> Besides the fight God. We keep famous DNA on file for history-related conspiracies. Cool. You have Tupac? Yep. And three Pac and four Pac. Doug Locke. What's on? Take shifting reptiles. Good morning, Senator. Revenue Senator. <laughs> Tell people the weather is controlled by Gerald from accounting, or that the Dow Jones is controlled by blood sacrifices. Shares of J.P. Morgan Chase up 14 points. Wow! Rules, rules. The last one. Reagan, you're the life of this party. That's the most natural smile I've ever seen out of Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> So the song Shake It Off was about how I shed my skin every thousand years. And the song Bad Blood was about how I drink blood out of my Grammys. A ghost to blood! Save some blood for Paul Rudd. I gave you my everything they teach. Hold on, hold on, I have to pause. Who remembers Hillary drinking that that water like that? The video. I, uh, if you don't believe me, go look it up on TikTok. Oh, it's like anywhere on the internet. Just look it up. You in school is a lie. You want the truth? The world is controlled by shadowy elites and shape-shifting lizard people. Hmm. 
Like I say, ain't nothing ever coincidence. They put it in the movies, the TV shows, and the cartoons. What did you know? What do you know? Man, we've been seeing this for a long time. seen the movie they live if you ain't never seen the movie they live you definitely need to check it out and you definitely need to go check out v hey it ain't no hit or miss with those those are the hits for sure for sure definitely gonna make your mind wonder okay so if you haven't followed me or if this is new to you i've been posting a lot of content right lately about reptilians and that they're real they are the democratic national convention and they're out there right now and um, this is all truth, you guys. So stay to listen if you want to be entertained, if you think I'm just crazy, because maybe you'll learn something. Anyway, um, go back and watch my videos. Nancy Pelosi just admitted they are all reptilians, and she's one of them. Okay, so I have a video on that. Anyway, somebody else wrote in a comment, and um, this is interesting. I do not watch the Game of Thrones, so I know it's very popular. But um, thank you for writing this. They said that in the second to the last episode of Game of Thrones, called the bells um the dragon queen goes crazy when they ring the bells everyone was like what the hell happens yes 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 reptilians cannot take the sound of bells i've heard it's any bell so if you have a bell just use it download an app of bells because i'm telling you guys this is about to go down this is going to be biblical we, the demons that the Bible speaks of, if you believe in the Bible, the demons that the Bible speaks of are these reptilians. Same thing, okay? We are all going to be seeing them very soon. Um, possibly this weekend. Anyway, think about this. There's another great uh, comment uh, that uh, I learned was that the reason why we have doorbells, or they used them back in the day, they were bringing bells outside their doors. Um, wind chimes, I think, um, was because they wanted to see if it was a reptilian. They didn't want to answer the door if it was a reptilian or an evil witch or this is all real. This is all the stuff they haven't told us, you guys. Anyway, uh, so think about that. Now, um, any type of bell I heard works, dingle bell, let's get a bell, download an app. Um, it's well, it renders them powerless, and like this statement says, that it also, um, it drives them insane. They can't, they can't, it's insanity to them. I have another video that I'm putting out today, watch for that, and it, I'm explaining exactly what it does to them. Um, I heard singing bowls also work. Um, uh, anyway, uh, that's what I have for you right now. Go watch my other videos. I'm the Reptilians, all at the end. You start ringing bells, you guys. We're gonna see some freaky shit very soon. God bless you. Man, I was just telling somebody in a post earlier that I made about the same topic that maybe they were a race of demons. Oh, you never know. But uh, it looked like there's some evidence right there. But like I say, man, ain't nothing ever a coincidence, man. It's been in front of our faces this whole time. We just been too blind to see what's really going on. Let's open some eyes. There seems to have been some sort of worldwide decree to destroy church bells. Understanding why hundreds of thousands of giant bells were destroyed will help you to understand the great war for the human soul. Just as Tartaria had giant walls, star forts, and castles to protect against physical attack, they also had bells to protect against energetic attack. Why are singing bowls, tingshas, and bells played during religious ceremonies? Because they enrich the space with frequencies that protect us against demonic attack. We were invaded by a hostile alien species, and World War I and World War II were simply the cover-ups for a greater war that happened before. In order to beat them, we must do so with frequency. 
which is why it is prophesied that the 144,000 will play a new song. It's never a coincidence, man. We need to get our bells back. That's for sure. Y'all, and spam the comment section with the three Ps. The three Ps, man. The plot, the ploy, the play. That's what, that was was implemented on us right there. That's that's the real, you know, that's the recipe that they use on us. The plot, the ploy, the play. Take the bells away. It's part, it's part of the plot, the ploy, and the play. If you catch my drift, some people ain't going to get it, man. They're going to have to rewatch the video, man, or something. They're not going to really understand what I'm talking about, what's really going on, even though it's right in front of your face. Underground reptilian food yeah. supply exposed. So we sent the truck out to pick up the container. I rolled out there and uh, took the box up and uh, started pulling it up. And uh, it, it was so heavy, it just uh, it broke the uh, broke the winch. And we couldn't get it off the trailer, so we had to leave it on the trailer because it was too heavy. So I was asked by Nick to have a crew go down and unload the container at the other yard. I got a radio call that uh, from Ron Gillette, the foreman. They said the men were throwing up, and there was something really wrong. One of them fell down and hit me right in front of my feet and it was opened up, and there it was. And when I came to work the following day, I, uh, I saw it myself, and I couldn't believe it. And it was just, you know, just little bitty babies, you know, it was just all torn pieces. The heads chopped off, arms, legs, you know, it's just, well, really, it's just, you know, it makes you want to cry when you see something like that. Starting at the very front of this container, it was just wall clear to the ceiling, and clear to the sides, filled with them. I really don't want to witness it again, not, not what I saw. Well, as the supervisor for the county of Los Angeles, we found out through the, through the media that 17,000 infants had been uh, stored in a container. Check. For those who can't see, you need to ask for the, the power of discernment, man. Ask God, you know, for discernment, man, to see what's really going on, because that's the only way you're going to see what's really going on other than that you're gonna think man this is fake this can't be going on if this was really going on the government wouldn't allow that the government would not never allow this type of activity aliens aren't real rah, 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 rah. god is real if he was real you definitely got to know god is real man for real demons are real angels are real hey come on now you gotta get it together reptiliano revela sua verdadeira face ao vivo Blake is a reptile. <laughs> There's another thing, human roots, reptile guys. I mean, I mean, do you like pizza? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Me too, man. Whoa. Oh my God, yeah. you're so stupid. It's crazy. <laughs> now I know you, I know you just know, I just know you know what pizza means. Without me having to go too deep, man. You know we got to talk cold on this bad boy, y'all. I know you know what pizza means. Yeah, no, I mean, everybody realizes that this is about honest story and what I've learned in Latin America. Yeah, now What you, did you learn? Yeah. Well, I met with my job. I work for UNICEF, which is an amazing organization that works in over 150 countries. And my job was to meet with teenagers who were living in exclusion, who were living in um, extreme poverty or living with HIV and write their stories, listen to their stories and I write them for UNICEF. This. And so... I mean, I obviously learned so much from these kids. I learned from Anna in particular, who has lived an extremely difficult life. I learned um, to live each day to its fullest. Uh, excuse learned... me, Jenny. There's a word you used earlier in the interview about exclusion. Can you explain what that yes. is? Yes. 
Well, a lot of the kids I met, I mean, mm. exclusion is a broad term, obviously, but the kids I met were living oh, in see. extreme poverty. They didn't have access to medical care or education, schooling. Um, they were living with HIV. And, and so um, they were living uh, outside of, of um, society's embrace. Mm -hmm. and I think doing, I'm sorry, okay. doing any kind of missionary work, I think, really changes a person. And you and your sister had a little bit, I mean, you guys weren't Paris Hilton, but you had a little bit of a <laughs> reputation as party girls. Do you think this changed you? Well, no. I mean, I think people had that image of us because they didn't know really what we were up to because we wanted to keep private. But of course, you know, so it didn't change my personality necessarily. But I taught for two years after um, the University of Texas, after graduating, and then went on to Latin America. And, and um, you know, of course, I've grown up. It's been seven years since people <laughs> had that image of me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, listening to their stories was, it was incredible. And Je it did Jenna, when me. you see this, when you not only listen to their stories, but you get involved and you write about it mm -hmm. as well, does it change how you look, you're thinking about how government should run in the United States and elsewhere to help these people? Why should these people be in these situations? Yeah, I mean, I think the United States government does try to help. I went to Africa this this summer um, with my mom, and I met a lot of um, people who's who are getting assistance from the United States government and, and um, to help them get the medicine they need to stay to stay healthy. But um, definitely, and I think the key is education. And um, for instance, with Anna, Anna's mother didn't have the education to know what to do to keep her baby Anna safe. So Anna inherited HIV from her mom, but Anna, with education in Latin America, has taken mm -hmm. the proper ARVs, Look and the, her baby, Beatrice, is most likely HIV negative. So there wow. is a positive light to all of this. Does it ever make you feel like you... Don't fall for the boo-boo, man. That's what I'm talking about. Rare breed crew, RBC, in the house. That's part of the plot, the ploy. And the play, if you ain't got it yet, man, maybe you won't get it, but hopefully you will in due time. And this this is not to cause any fear mongering or anything like that. This is just to kind of warm you up and get you ready for what's really going on, what's really fit to pop out the woodworks on you. You know what I'm saying? Remember that demon syndrome thing? Part of the plot, the ploy, and the play. Pay attention. Just warm you up. It's the truth. You can blow your mind out. According to a 2013 poll, 12 million people believe that the United States government and other high positions of power in our country are controlled by traditional reptilians. If this is so, what do we as a people do to shield ourselves from this imposing threat? The answer is nothing. We haven't the technology or force to combat an enemy fortified by technology light years ahead of us. A reckoning for the human race is quickly approaching, and we must prepare for its outcome. Y'all gonna definitely want to pause and read that, and I'm telling you, when I say I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man. The government tried to take over reptilian civilizations. The exact location of the underground lizard people city under Los Angeles as published in the Los Angeles Times, January 29, 1934. It was put together by G. Warren Schufel, a California geophysicist mining engineer. By using his radio x-ray apparatus, he claimed to have pinpointed the exact spot of the hidden city of the lizard people. This map traces a pattern of tunnels and catacombs that seem to form the exact shape of a lizard. The borders form around the old Valley Tunnels underneath Los Angeles near North Film Street, overlooking Sunset Boulevard, 
Spring Street and North Broadway as it appeared in 1954. The tail of the lizard's shape on this map points to the northeast at Lookout and Martyr Streets. The Lizard City's main room is located directly under South Broadway near 2nd Street. According to Indian legend, lizard people lived on the surface of the earth until a great catastrophe destroyed their civilization more than 5,000 years ago. They built underground cities to protect themselves against future catastrophes. Some researchers say tablets in the main room show evidence of the true origin of the human race. It wasn't until the 20th century that widespread accounts of disappearances and even deaths near the Banning Tunnels began to appear in local papers. This coincided with our destruction of nature to make way of our modern civilization. If we were destroying the lizard cities through our excavations and deforestations, were the lizard people simply fighting back in the only way that you have? If the world governments knew of the existence of the lizard people, then they would keep it a secret from everyone else. Reports of strange disappearances and deaths not only were heard about in Los Angeles, but around the world, to name a few. In the catacombs of Paris, France, the salt mines of Bilalichka, Poland, and the tunnels of Cappadocia, Turkey. Eyewitnesses, government documents, whistleblowers, all have shown that something is going on here that needs investigating. Is our human civilization threatened by a violent creature? Half lizard and half human that is reported to have now migrated all over the world, numbering in the millions, causing death and destruction in its path. Let us only hope we can unravel this mystery before it is too late for all of us. Say it's a lot of truth to a lot of those stories, man. I'm telling you, uh, you may not have heard it before, but I'm telling you, it's some truth to that. You just got to go to the right places, like the old maps and the old books. I'm telling you, it's there, just like the mermaid situation. It's there, definitely, y'all. But, hey, y'all, that's the end of the video. If you want to see more cool content on the channel just like that, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel. It's your boy Kuzi. I'm out. Holla.